It's a portrait of John Muir. Say, Sam, just who is John Muir? Who's John Muir? Hey, guys, this dope doesn't know who John Muir is. You gotta be kidding. What a maroon. What a dib cow poop. Sam, the dead animal heads are talking to me. Where? Up there. Well? But... You really shouldn't tell fibs about dead animals, Max. But... Stop bugging me. I'm admiring this portrait of John Muir. But who's John Muir? Do you really want to know? If you'll stop talking, sure. Okay. Hit it, boys. There once was a man named John Muir. A naturalist, noble and pure. His love for all beasties. The most and the leasties. Has never been equaled. Uh... For sure! It's kinda wobbly in here. Hey Max, come here. Here I come. One must admire the skill with which the wily uber trout stalks its prey. This is one of the ten most liberating experiences of my life, Sam. Holy mackerel! I'm a trout, stupid! Holy trout! I'd always thought you were made of plaster! Now what do we do, Sam? I'm thinking. What's that noise? It sounds like you do when you've eaten too much Thai food, I Sam. I can't get over how much this mammoth hair resembles Sasquatch hair. Hey, Max. Hey, what? I've got a job for those mighty incisors of yours. What? See that woolly mammoth? What about it? Stop playing dumb and get chomping. Fine work, Max. Now we've got more full woolly mammoth hair than we'll ever need, and we've learned an important lesson. Yeah, the woolly mammoths died of embarrassment. I still don't see what all the fuss is about. Hovering dragon's heart, just like the one I have at home. Finish it already. Well, I am the key master. Does that come with a dental plan? Wow, it's Monster Truck Weekend! Happening every Sunday. Sunday! Sunday! Okay, I'm over the shock now. I'm not, but I'm sure my gentle naivete will survive. It's one of Conroy's toupees. And stay out! How can you stand to work for someone who persecutes harmless beasts like Bruno the Bigfoot? Uh, on my feet? He's got you there, Sam.
It's a fearsome mall. Hi, my name is Rex, the Thunder... That was informative. We finally got the tooth. The whole tooth? Nothing but. It's a somewhat authentic dinosaur tooth. This place evokes a sense of wonder. You have to wonder. This line's not moving very quickly. The same thing could be said about the plot. That's not funny, Max. This line's not moving very quickly. The same thing could be said about the plot. That's not funny, Max. I bet this is an e-ticket ride. Well, what the heck are you talking about, Methuselah? You should show more respect toward your elders, Sonny. Respect this, Bowser Breath. Ooh, can I pummel him now, Sam? No, Max. Puberty will be punishment enough for this one. True. Can we cut in line? Not on your life, Fido. We want to ride the tar slide. Line forms in the back, Shep. Oh, the humanity. Where? So long, squirt. Looks like this elevator will take us up into Washington's nose. She must be the instructor on duty. She must be the instructor on duty. She's not my type. How can you take this smell? After a while, your nose will go numb and you won't care. Trust me. My nose is running. Whose isn't? We're in law enforcement. How much would you charge us to use the bungees? Enthusiastic law enforcement. I'd let you go anytime. I'm partial to dog and bunny teams. That's weird. Works for me. Hey, that furry pig thing is still down there. That's the beauty of this tar. It's always at the right consistency and temperature. It could be days before you sink too low for us to find you. I'm convinced. Let's go, flyboy. My nose is running. Whose isn't? Bye. So long, cutie. Quit that. So, what do you think? It fits you just fine. Ooh, stand back. She may pounce. It's a danger I face every day. So, Max, what do you think? A regular 007. Are you sure? Clint Baby would be nervous. But get moving! I'm beginning to think you're stalling. Clint. Baby. Who's stalling? I'm just waiting for my buddy to come here and check out this spectacular view. I can't use these things together. Mm. 
It's a bunch of tar. He must be the instructor on duty. Now the costume is covered with tar. Now we've got a stilt walker's costume covered with tar and faux woolly mammoth hair. It says Igavas Nyeljit Ni. Close enough for jazz. Let's go. I had no one to call. Call me, call me. You'd have to get cellular. I'm pixular. It's better than cellular. That's bad, Max. Really bad. Who cares? I'm cute! Jeez! I guess we could try it on. Gee, that's really close. But you guys need something to cover that bunny fella's face. Okay, I've attached Conroy Bumpus' toupee to the Stilt Walker's costume. I can't use these things together. I had no one to call. I guess we could try it on. Hmm. Hey, that's a downright nice Sasquatch costume. I'll let you guys in with that one. Looks like something important's happening. Hundreds of years ago, it was becoming apparent that our time was running out. Yet we were slow to heed the warnings of impending doom. The seemingly slow encroachment of mankind and all that as many living styles entail seemed like a vague and distant problem. A problem for future generations of Yeti to solve. Blithely, we sat back, ignoring our own inner call for action. Tradition and the status quo were our excuses for complacency. The certainty of not just losing our way of life, but possibly our very lives. And the demise of our entire race is now becoming a reality. A reality we can no longer choose to ignore. As it turns out, the humans and their technology are moving faster than we are, much faster than we had anticipated. And so, we now face the final crisis. Unless we pull together, not just acknowledging the need for change, but embracing change not just with our hearts and our minds, but with our actions, we will fall behind, moving backward into extinction. Well, back to the music.
What choreography? Chateau Sasquatch 92. A very bad year. A third shadow is nine. What are you talking about? Sorry, must have eaten some bad berries. What do you want? Has Bruno shown up yet? Keep your voice down. Bruno's involved in a top secret reconnaissance mission to the alien's home planet. Of course, how silly of me to forget. Have you seen Bruno's girlfriend anywhere? Shh, she's helping Bruno contact the aliens. Oh, yeah. You haven't run into Conroy Bumpus, have you? No, but I know how to deal with him. He has a near-fatal vulnerability to ice, like all beings from the evil planet Snargton. We'll keep that in mind. Aren't you the abominable, you know, bubble larvae? Never mind. You're the skinniest Bigfoot I've ever seen. I've been fasting in preparation for the day when the aliens come to rescue us. Didn't we meet last summer in Cancun? I don't think so. I was hanging upside down in a block of ice last summer. How'd that happen? Oh, the usual. I was strolling in the Andes, minding my own business, when some idiot mountain climber comes along and yells, Hey, it's the abominable snowman. Next thing I know, there's an avalanche, and I'm covered in 20 feet of snow. When I wake up, I'm hanging upside down in an ice block in some place called the Mystery Vortex. We'll catch you later. Figure speech. Bodacious Bigfoot babes. Take it easy, Max. You don't even like girls. I don't? Dude, are you like having an argument with your belly button? Uh... No. Your appetite's bigger than mine. Hey, man, if you'd spent the past eight years on a bread and water diet, you'd be scarfing down everything in sight too, dude. So, fellow smelly woodland creature, where have you been hiding for the past few years? Hiding? Dude, I've spent the last eight years manacled to a dunking booth. If Bruno and his girlfriend hadn't rescued me, I'd still be there. So, fellow smelly woodland creature, where have you been hiding for the past few years? Hiding? Dude, I've spent the last eight years manacled to a dunking booth. If Bruno and his girlfriend hadn't rescued me, I'd still be there. Have you seen Bruno around? I haven't seen the dude since he rescued me. I hear he's hiding out from a crazy bear and bunny who want to drag him off to an evil carnival. Bear? What was that? Gas. Have you heard from Trixie? I guess she's hiding out with Bruno. Have you seen Conroy Bumpus around here? Is he the guy that coined the phrase, Hang Ten? No, he's a country western star going berserk. Ooh, heinous. So where are all the bodacious Bigfoot babes? Take it easy, Max. You don't even like girls. I don't? Dude, are you like having an argument with your belly button? Uh... No. I'll let you get back to your food. Well, hello, dude. I wonder if they'll play Yellow River. Come, my darling, let me take you away from all of this. Can Vanuatu come too? Vanuahu? Vanuatu! The Bigfoot chief! The guy who just gave that speech! My husband! Mm -hmm. Don't sweat it, Junior! If I had a tree for every time a teenage Bigfoot's made a drunken pass at me, 
We surely wouldn't be in the mess we're in today. Not really. Gee, your hair smells terrific. You should talk to my hair care specialist, Janet. She does marvelous work. Why, just last autumn, she was soaking my head and I said, Janet, you're just about the best hair care specialist I've ever known. And then she said, Wapada, wapada, wapada. Yada, yada, yada. So naturally, I said, Walla, walla, walla. Then she had the nerve to say, Blah, blah, blah. Wapada, wapada, wapada. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada, yada. What do you think about the pressing Bigfoot issues of the day? God, I can't believe I lived long enough to hear you say that. The answers were all there in my husband's speech. Pull together. Embrace change. Avoid extinction. And if that doesn't work, we'll eat all the humans. It must be a hoot being married to our Commander-in-Chief. Oh, it's not that great. Sure, you get to travel, but sometimes you get so lonely. Why, just yesterday I was telling my therapist, Nancy. Nancy, sometimes it's so lonely at the top. Then she had the nerve to say, Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Have you seen Bruno? Bruno? Why, me and Mr. V have known little Bruno since he was knee-high to a pig. Salt of the earth, Bruno is. Nicest, most generous Bigfoot you'll ever meet. Dumb as a post, of course, but generous. Why, just the other day I was talking to my manicurist, Kimmy, and I said, Kimmy, that Bruno has got to be the dumbest creature to ever walk the surface of the planet. Then she had the nerve to say, Bow, bow, bow. Ugly have you seen Trixie around here? Trixie? Nice girl, wonderful human being. Complete fashion victim, of course, but so pleasant. Just last week, I was talking to Katie, my color consultant, and I said, Katie, that Trixie girl wouldn't know a burn noose from a sarong if her life depended on it. Then she had the nerve to say, bow, bow, bow. You haven't seen Conroy Bumpus sneaking around, have you? Internationally renowned country western superstar Conroy Bumpus? I've got all his albums. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'd say he's the most gifted entertainer of the 20th century. He's an immoral cretin, of course, but boy, can he sing. I was talking to my chiropractor, Karen, just last month, and I said, Karen, that despicable Conroy Bumpus sure has got a pretty voice. And then she said, Adieu. Don't be a stranger. Stop. Sorry, hon. Only Yeti elders are allowed in the pool area. I can't use these. Chateau Sasquatch 92. A very bad year. He's not my type. I don't indiscriminately use people, except Max. Stop! Sorry, hon. Only Yeti elders are allowed in the pool area. Where's my John Muir vegetable? Here you go, son. A zucchini squash that looks just like John Muir. Gee, thanks, man. Thanks. Bye. It's a nice pick. I can't talk to that. Yeah. 
Yikes! Well, 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 a Bigfoot. Sure is a scrawny feller. A Bigfoot in the hand is worth two in the bush, Lee Harvey. Uh, sorry, boss. Think nothing of it, old chap. Now, be a good lad and pop off to the bus and get the net. Yes, sir, Mr. Bumpus. Don't make a move. I'd probably feel more threatened if I wasn't so hungry. You'll be well fed in my menagerie. Where'd you get the extra toupee? I'm only gonna say this once, so listen closely. I don't wear a toupee! Look behind you, a three-headed monkey. Nice try. I can't be in your menagerie. I don't know how to play an instrument. You'll be amazed how a few hundred volts speeds up the learning process. Where'd you get that British accent, anyway? I'm originally from Liverpool, twit. You. Why do you persecute harmless Bigfoots? Harmless? Harmless? I'll have you know my parents were killed by a rabid Bigfoot. Really? Well, no. Actually, I'm just a warped, evil person who gets his jollies torturing cute woodland creatures. Well, that's a valid motivation, too. I'm not really a Bigfoot, you know. Call the other one. You'll never get away with this. Ooh, I'm so scared. Don't make a move. Don't make a move. Maybe this will convince you that I'm not a Bigfoot. You again? I left the net back in Bumpusville. Forget the net. We're gonna disguise ourselves as a Bigfoot. Why? So we can infiltrate their ranks, learn their ways, and pick them off at our leisure. Oh. And no funny stuff, dog boy. Yeah. How hey! I wouldn't move if I were you. Yeah. Hey, Max, why don't you make yourself useful? That was fun. Now future generations will be able to enjoy his atonal warblings. Are there any more shrimp balls back here? Who, who are you? We're the freelance police. We just saved your collective hash. Really? Then I guess it'd be okay to make you honorary Yeti chiefs. Walk this way. Can I have your attention, please? Although it's our tradition to allow only Bigfoots and their dates to these gatherings, these two have shown themselves worthy of our gratitude and our trust. These are a naive people. And so I'm granting them the title of Honorary Bigfoot Chief. So don't mess with them. That's it? Honorary Bigfoot Chief? Where's the cash? We don't want Bigfoot money, Max. It's probably made of tree bark or something. I know, but it's the principle of the thing. You may now wander freely about the convention floor without concern for your health. Gee, thanks. Think nothing of it. Follow me. Since you have proven yourselves to be friends of the Yeti, I have brought you here to share in our biggest secret. These great totem poles have been gathered from across the world and passed down from generation to generation of Bigfoots. Like fruitcake. We believe they hold the answer to our ultimate salvation. But the secret of their purpose is a riddle we've been unable to fathom. Sounds heavy. Like fruitcake. It's real heavy. Bruno. Like fruitcake. Why aren't you at the party? Who can party while their world comes to an end? Most of your mange-ridden brethren, apparently. Well, I told you it was a bad idea to spike the punch. I thought it would loosen up everyone's imagination. No wonder we're facing extinction. Okay, guys, here's the situation. The Bigfoot way of life is rapidly going down the tubes. 
these totem poles might be able to save us, but A, we don't know what they mean, B, most of us have been partying too much to figure out what they mean, and C, we Bigfoots have a hard time operating in public, if you know what I mean. We wouldn't normally be asking for help, but we're desperate. Well, that's how we get most of our gigs, so why not? Great. Why don't you three get cracking on the totem poles? I'm going to the hot tub. Okay, Sam, he's here, we're here. Let's go. Wait, go where? Back to the carnival so we can get paid, you big lummox. I may be slow, but I am not stupid. I'm staying right here. Psst, Max. What? Maybe we should wait a while before returning Bruno to his well-meaning yet horribly twisted owners. Why? Because I have a sick, gnarled premonition that something important is going to happen to the Bigfoots. And it would be nice if Bruno were here to see it before we slapped him back in a block of ice. You're getting soft, Sam. We've decided to let you roam free until the end of the convention. Gee, thanks. Is there anything I can do for you in return? What's caused this big crisis you and the Chief keep rattling on about? Trees. What's wrong with the trees? Are they succumbing to outdated Marxist dogma? No, there aren't enough of them. Bigfoots need trees to hide behind. Without trees, we're easily hunted, captured, and put on display by thoughtless humans. Sam, I think I'm feeling my very first pang of guilt in the... Nope, it's gone. False alarm. I still can't figure out how a witty urbane Bigfoot like yourself fell into the clutches of the Cushmans. It's a familiar story. Bigfoot meets fish. Bigfoot tries to catch fish. Bigfoot falls into arctic ice flow. That's a classic, all right. Didn't I hear something about a hot tub around here? Later, little buddy. Right now we've got things to figure out. But that hot tub really sounds like the place to be. Later. What do you make of that totem pole on the far left? Let me take a look. Hmm. Well? It's a totem pole. And? It's made of wood. It's not too late to take him back to the carnival, you know. Any keen Bigfoot insights into the totem pole with a tooth on it? I've been staring at that one for hours and... Yes? I think it has something to do with teeth. I'm not holding my breath, but do you have any clue who the guy in the third totem pole is? Nope. He sure seems to get along with vegetables, though. Sam, the guy in that pole's got a marshmallow. So? I want a marshmallow. Max, you are a marshmallow. See that totem pole? What about it? What do you think it means? Hmm. I've got it. What did you tell them? I told them to start looking for bald guys with spaghetti on their heads. So what do you think about all this? I'm just happy to be here, Sam. Happy to be at room temperature and happy to be free at last. Born free, as free as the wind blows. Max. What? What were you saying, Bruno? Hmm. I lost my thought. Darn. How'd you and Trixie meet, anyway? We didn't really meet until she thawed me out. But I've loved her ever since that first night she snuck into the freak tent and sang me to sleep with a Scrantonese lullaby. <laughs> and you want to put him back in a block of ice? Yeah! So? I give up. Well, now that Conroy's out of your hair, what are you going to do? Try brushing it, maybe? Well, I've still got the Cushmans to worry about, so I guess I'm still a little tense. Be seeing you. Not if I see you first.
It's Max. That's one damn stately looking Bigfoot. Can you spare a second? Not really. But since you're saving my species from extinction, what the heck? You know, I'm really anxious about this whole totem pole thing. It'll work. Trust me. I met Anxious once. He's the one with the drool in his beard. That wasn't Anxious. It was your cotton candy. Well, that certainly clears up one mystery. I'm still having nightmares about alligators. I know that everyone involved with this extraordinary quest has had their demons to contend with. But let me make one thing perfectly clear. It'll be worth it. Ack! He said quest! I think my furry little body may break out in a rash of unsightly hives. What do you make of the first totem pole? As you know, this is a problem that I've been working on for many years. Research strongly suggests this totem pole to be representative of the whirlwind nature of us Bigfoots. Wild and always moving. What's your take on the second totem pole? I'm glad you asked. You see, I believe that it represents the sharp edge of ancient history. The fantastic staying power of the Yeti people over the millennia. How does the third pole figure into the scheme of things? Let me be very clear. That pole constitutes the harmony from the coexistence of two similar beings. A harmony that springs from mutual respect and understanding. What does the fourth totem pole represent? I'm asked that very question all the time. My answer, rapid growth. What can you tell us about Bruno? Is it me, or does it feel as if we've asked just about everybody in the country about Bruno? Ah, Bruno. Full of vim and vigor, ready to take on the world. It reminds me of when I was his age. What do you think about Trixie? She's such a sweet girl, and very representative of the open-mindedness of our Yeti leadership. We're very proud of that. What's your official stance on Conroy Bumpus? Conroy Bumpus is a threat to the American way of life. It has been and continues to be of highest importance that we rid ourselves of this most negative influence on the young people of our brave new world. The missus and I sure like his music, though. We'll be back. I'll be here. I believe we've deduced the secret of one of your totem poles. Hit me! The combination of man and nature. Inventive. Is it soup yet? Hey, Chiefy Poo, I think I figured out one of those baffling totem poles. A genuine dinosaur tooth. I figured it might be something like that. Did he say genuine? I don't think the ice pick will remove the cork. I don't think the ice pick will remove the cork. I can't use these things together. Hey, Mr. Chief, we found something that might tie into your totem poles. Yeah? W what is it? Hair growth tonic. Very resourceful. We just like stealing pillows.
Take a leg, Max. Could you bend this? Sure. Let's see it. Hmm. How's that? Great. That seems to have gotten the cork off. Shall we raise a toast to nuclear disarmament? With this poison? Don't be silly. That seems to have capped the snow globe. It's an empty snow globe with a cork stopper. Can we try the vortex? Step right in. Neat. Can we try the vortex? Step right in. Wow. 
Wow, the snow globe actually sucked in the pseudo-mystical energies of the mystery vortex. I was hoping something like that would happen. It's a snow globe full of swirling pseudo-mystical energies. I think I figured out one of the totem poles. Let me see. A handheld vortex. Good thinking. Thinking had nothing to do with it. Well, that should do it, right? Nothing's happening, Sam. What's the story, Pops? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure you got the ingredients right, but... Oh, of course, how silly of me. What? In order for the spell to work, we need a living Bigfoot sacrifice. It'd be a shame to lose one of these furry fellas, don't you think? Wait, I've got an idea. And it doesn't require high explosives. Wait here. While he's gone, I'll go see if any of the Bigfoots wants to off themselves for the greater good. That was one heck of an impressive display. And actually highly destructive to boot. Goodbye, Sam and Max. I'm not sure how I could ever thank you, so I guess I won't. Will you and Trixie be heading back into the forest to live an idyllic nature-oriented existence together? Hell no. We're going to Vegas to get hitched. If it hasn't been trashed by all this crazy Redwood nonsense. We want to be in a place where we can sort of blend in. Live our lives. Maybe even raise a family. Ew. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, you nutsy primitive man-beast, you. You boys should be proud of what you've helped us achieve here today. 
You mean the wholesale destruction of the symbols of modern civilization in the Western United States? You bet we are. Do we win a prize? Well, oh, why not? This medallion has been a part of my family for untold generations. Wear it in good health. Thanks, Chief. Max loves cheap sentiment. Mmm, mmm, foil covered chocolatey goodness. What's wrong, Sam? I don't think the wizard has anything in that bag for me. Well, I could give you my ritual headdress that I bought at Snucky's last week. I appreciate the gesture, but I've already got a hat. Well, that's fine too. Farewell, Sam and Max. Remember, though the night be dark, the dawn yet shall awaken and annoy you. Have a nice day. I'll miss that old rascal. I'll miss the way he smelled like a bag full of damp hamster shavings. Just like Grandpa. Hey, we forgot to get paid. Don't worry, little buddy. I've got it all covered. I hope you're happy. With those idiots on the case, we'll probably never see Bruno again. Oh, lighten up, Burl. Hey, they're back! Did you find Bruno? Of course. Bruno! How can we ever repay you? The blank looks on your faces are the only reward we need. That and a big fat check. Would you settle for 3,000 skee-ball tickets? Close enough. Let's go, Max. You know, Max, I can't help thinking that we've foolishly tampered with the fragile inner mechanisms of this little spaceship we call Earth. Gosh, Sam, if a few hundred years of civilization have to be total just to ensure that a bunch of smelly quasi-human creatures have a safe haven for their disgusting lifestyles, then so be it! You crack me up, little buddy. Burl, did Bruno always have four arms?
For my first trick, pulling the dog out of the hat. Thank you, Chippy. Now for some credits. Impressed, eh? Well, watch this. Uh? Uh? Let me try that again. The wand never fails. I'm getting the idea. And now for my next trick. Oh well, back to the old drawing board. Pretty good, huh? I'm entirely self-taught, you know. I can't believe you've watched this far. I would have skipped through it by now. I can smell burning. Hang on. Ow! Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh! Riff, riff, riff. I'd like to see you do better. I wonder if I can find a better dog in here. Wow! I didn't even have time to get a phone number. And now, for all you traditionalists, Knocks them dead every time. Now for the woman again. Ah! <coughs> Never mind. I like a woman with spirit. Oi, oi.